in 1846, a man was born that should become one of Germany's true legends in the automobile industry. His name was Wilhelm Maybach. With the spirit of a relentless warrior and the soul of a restless inventor, he became a masterful engineer and contributed some of the most innovative ideas that changed the history of automobiles forever. Maybach today may be known for the luxury car brand that carries its name, but how is he related to a famous clock of a grandfather? And why in the world do Zeppelins play a role in his story? This is the inspiring rags to riches story of the young orphan boy who created one of the most prestigious luxury car brands in the world. Wilhelm Maybach was not born to a rich or middle-class German family. He was born poor in Heilbronn, a courageous city on the Neckar River in Germany, known for its gently rolling hills and picturesque views. As a child, he suffered many hardships after both of his parents died within one year, when he was barely 10 years old. Luckily, his relatives placed an announcement in the local newspaper about the death of his parents, and the five orphans left behind. The announcement got the attention of Gustav Werner, the founder of a philanthropic institution dedicated to rescuing orphans and education in the district of Reutlingen. Werner noticed that Maybach was interested in mechanical objects and math, so he decided to send him to one of the schools that specialize in engineering workshops, which were funded by his institution. Maybach excelled at his studies, and little did he know at that time that his engineering skills would lead him to become a true industry legend. In 1858, after Gustav Werner founded the Orphans Welfare Institution in Reutlingen, he established workshops that made items such as paper machines, agricultural machinery, and way bridges. At the mere age of 15 in 1861, Maybach became an apprentice as a technical draftsman at one of these workshops. To his luck, the legendary Gottlieb Daimler, the father of all Daimler engines and car brands, became an organizer of some of the workshops in 1863, and that's when they met each other for the first time. In 1872, Daimler began working at the firm Deutz AG, which was a German internal combustion engine manufacturer and the world's largest company for stationary gas engines, based in Ports Cologne. They were also partially owned by Nicholas Otto. Maybach soon joined them as their chief designer. Nicholas Otto was a famous German engineer accredited with the development of the compressed charge internal combustion engine, which ran on petroleum gas and led to the modern internal combustion engine. Yet, despite his fame, Otto was known to be jealous of both Daimler and Maybach. In 1882, Otto fired Daimler and merely gave him 112 gold marks in Deutz AG shares in compensation for his and Maybach's patents. And, of course, Maybach resigned soon after and followed his friend Daimler. In 1882, after Maybach and Daimler left Otto's company, they started their own engine-building workshop in the town of Kanstadt, just outside of Stuttgart. In 1883, they patented one of the first successful high-speed internal combustion engines and developed a carburetor that made it possible to use gasoline as fuel. Their first experiment with a gasoline-fired engine was performed on a bicycle, perhaps the first motorcycle in the world. The duo built more improved versions of the engine in 1884. A flywheel was included in one of the gas engines. Their latest designs were smaller and lighter than engines by any other inventors of the time. It was called the Grandfather Clock Engine because of its resemblance to a large pendulum clock. In early 1886, Daimler and Maybach became aware that the competition was heating up, and all eyes from foes and admirers alike were on them. They decided to secretly order 
an American version carriage of the coach builder Wilhelm Wimpf and Sohn. Unfortunately, they did not show it to the public after they turned it into an automobile powered by a combustion engine until November 1886, exactly three months after the Benz Motor Wagon was awarded the patent as the first true automobile. In 1886, they mounted one of their upgraded engines in a 15-foot-long boat and achieved a speed of 6 knots, or 11 kilometers per hour. The boat was called the Neckar, after the river where it was tested. Ironically, most of their customers at the time expressed fear that the boat's petrol engine could explode, so they hid the engine with a ceramic cover and told their fearful customers that it was an oil-electrical engine. In 1888, they achieved another important milestone after their engine went airborne and, technically speaking, powered what can only be called the first airship, a massive air balloon. Dirigible balloon crafts existed before the Daimler engine, but their engines, designed by Dr. Friedrich Hermann Wolfert of Leipzig, were propelled by hand. In 1889, Maybach and Daimler joined the upper echelons of wealth less than two years after they sold their first foreign licenses for their engines. A good portion of their new wealth was attributed to excellent revenues from the Neckar boat sales. In June 1887, Daimler and Maybach bought 3,000 square meters of land on the outskirts of the Seelberg Hills in Cannstatt and set up a manufacturing workshop Initially, they employed 23 people. Soon, in 1890, the Daimler Motorin Gesellschaft, abbreviated DMG, was established and had more than 100 employees. Daimler managed their commercial issues while Maybach headed the design department. The race for creating superior cars was on. International corporations were hungry for more from Daimler and Maybach. Companies such as Panhard, the French motor vehicle manufacturer specialized in manufacturing light tactical military vehicles. Another company eager to use Maybach's engine was the Daimler Motor Company of Coventry in the United Kingdom, established by Frederick Sims after he bought the patent rights for the engine, including the name Daimler Motors. He later renamed it Daimler Motor Syndicate. In the United States of America, the Steinway & Sons Company a German-American piano company in Manhattan benefited greatly from the rights for the Daimler engine in 1896 and expanded to include two factories, one in Queens, New York, which supplied the Americas, and another in Hamburg, Germany, which supplied Asia. These companies started the race for the best combustion engine-powered car and caused the industry to evolve and expand globally, all thanks to Daimler and Maybach. In 1889, Maybach and Daimler produced their first car. They chose to build it from scratch rather than buying pre-made carriage-like chassis from coach builders. They called it the Daimler Steel Wheel Automobile when it was publicly launched during the Exposition Universelle, a World's Fair held in 1889 in Paris, France. The new car was just as unique and intriguing as Maybach's and Daimler's personalities. Its specifications included a high-speed four-stroke petrol engine, fuel vaporization, two cylinders V-configured, mushroom-shaped valves, water cooling, a four-speed toothed gearbox, and a Pioneer axle pivot steering system. The following few years were somewhat chaotic for Daimler and Maybach, even though DMG continued to expand, selling engines from Moscow to New York. According to some historians, the engine proceeds from engine sales and their patents were not yielding enough money. This led Daimler to become convinced that DMG could only survive, grow, and innovate by merging with one of the cash-rich industrial giants. The financial crisis at DMG did not persist for long because Daimler struck deals with the German financier Max von Dutenhofer, 
known for producing the first smokeless gunpowder, and William Lawrence, a former munitions maker, DMG was taken public. To the dismay of Daimler and Maybach, the new management of DMG insisted that the company merge with Deutz AG, which was partially owned by their old nemesis, Nicholas Otto. Naturally, this led to heated debates and objections. In the end, Maybach was rejected as a member of the board of management and left the company on the 11th of February, 1891. However, he and Daimler continued to work together. With some financial help from Daimler, Maybach went to establish a workshop in the ballroom of the former Hermann Hotel in Cannstatt, where he employed 17 workers. As a result of this indirect collaboration, a new attention-grabbing advanced engine was developed in 1894. The engine was used in the Phoenix automobile, dubbed Double Phaeton. It was able to reach the speed of 24 kilometers per hour. In 1894, Daimler was forced out by Otto, who had a great influence on DMG's board members. However, he later returned after the British industrialist Frederick Sims purchased the rights to the Phoenix engine and insisted that Daimler and Maybach returned to DMG. In 1900, Emil Jelinek, the successful Austrian car dealer and racing driver, was a strong admirer of Maybach's work, so he asked him to design a race car with new specifications, and in return, he would buy a shipment of 36 automobiles. As expected, Maybach was up to the task, and the prototype was finished within months. The new car was named Mercedes, after Jelinek's 10-year-old daughter. Maybach's Mercedes was superiorly impressive and attracted the wealthy from across Europe and beyond. It represented a major success, and as a result, DMG became a true multinational industrial giant with thousands of employees. Some of the most intriguing features of the new Mercedes were the powerful 35 horsepower engine that allowed it to reach up to 75 kilometers per hour, the low height that gave it excellent traction, a long wheelbase, and driver-controlled intake valve throttling. Unfortunately, soon after this great success, Maybach was once again forced out of DMG, most likely due to the old feud with Otto. Later, he entered a long legal battle with the DMG board. In March 1900, Gottlieb Daimler passed away at the age of 65. From 1901 to 1930, the skies over Europe were ruled by Zeppelin airships powered by engines designed by Maybach and his son Karl. The whole story began in 1901 when Count Ferdinand von Zeppelin, a German general and later inventor of the Zeppelin airships, sought to improve the engines of the Zeppelin LZ-1 airship and approached Maybach to help him with his new endeavor. Maybach was offered to join Zeppelin's company, but had to hold off because he was still in litigation with DMG, so his son Carl took his place. Later in 1909, a deal was finally signed with the Luftschiffbau Zeppelin company. The deal allowed Maybach and his son to establish a manufacturing company designed to provide Zeppelin with engines. Wilhelm Maybach's new company was named Luftfahrzeug Beethoven GmbH. It kept supplying Zeppelin with engines and also built airship engines for other companies. In 1912, the company became Maybach Motovenbau GmbH. After the First World War, the Versailles Treaty of 1919 included terms that prohibited airship production in Germany. This fact led Maybach and his son to focus on producing high-speed diesel engines for naval and railroad use, in addition to petrol engines for automobiles. However, they did not manufacture entire cars. But in 1921, all that changed when Maybach decided to begin producing Maybach limousines. The first model, W3, was featured at the 1921 Automobile Exposition in Berlin. It had a six-cylinder engine 
and a maximum speed of 105 km per hour. It was followed by the W5 model, with the top speed increased to 135 km per hour. Next, Maybach produced cars with powerful V12 engines, but with the economic crisis looming in Germany, he was forced to ease car building activities. Wilhelm Maybach died at the age of 83 in Stuttgart on the 29th of December, 1929. The death of the great legend Maybach marked the end of the revolutionary era that changed the course of civilization and created a new path for humanity. His company, Maybach Motovenbau GmbH, continued to operate and innovate under the control of his son Karl. Karl became the dominant designer and manufacturer of engines for tanks and half-tracks in 1935. They were used by the German armed forces during World War II. After 1945, it manufactured a full range of diesel engines. In 1960, Maybach began to manufacture large engines for Daimler-Benz under a license agreement and entered into a phase of strong collaboration with Daimler-Benz. A few years later, Maybach Motovenbau GmbH changed its name to Maybach Mercedes-Benz Motovenbau GmbH with Daimler-Benz owning 80% of the company. From the 1960s to 2001, Maybach was mainly used by Mercedes to make special editions of custom handmade luxury Mercedes cars in the W108 and W116 model range. These cars, however, carried the Mercedes not the Maybach badge. However, since Mercedes-Benz announced the gradual revival of the Maybach brand in 1998 and the consequent relaunch of the brand in 2002, the new Maybachs represented serious competition to luxury car makers such as Rolls-Royce and Bentley. In the past two decades, Maybach cars such as the aerodynamically streamlined 2004 Accelero, the GLS60 4Matic SUV, the twin turbocharged 631 horsepower Zeppelin and the stunning 2021 S680 model turned heads and rivaled the old luxury car establishment. Are you an admirer of the mysterious and rare Maybach car brand? Have you ever seen a Maybach on the street or maybe even driven one? Please let us know in the comments. If you found this video entertaining and learned something new, please leave a like and tell us what you'd like to see next. Also, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell on your way out so you won't miss out on our next inspiring video. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you again soon.